snippets. This is just going to be a, a fundamental introduction to snippets. Tomorrow we'll get on to the more heavy duty stuff, which will cover things like that medium barrier that Pete just showed you how to do. That's a completely outdated way of doing it. I've got much better ways that you can wrap up in snippets. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, there's many ways to skin it. Yeah, okay. Now we've all, I'm going to run through some basics again, but I think it's fairly essential that we just gradually progress through this. And I said, what is a snippet? And for me, it's, it is your best friend. Now, there's one thing that puts a terrifies Alan in the office. It's when I sit there with Alan and I go, Al, you've got five minutes. And that happened several years ago when I was just wanted to, oh, it'd be nice if we could stick all these modifiers into one file together instead of having to repeat it. And uh, that five minutes has only turned into about four years solid work. But anyway, that's where it all started from, me being lazy. Geez, I don't want to type this all over again. It'd be really nice if we group these guys together. So yes, at their simplest, snippets are just a bunch of individual modifiers wrapped into the one file. At a moderate level, you've still got a bunch of simple modifiers wrapped into a file, but you need to pass in parameters because, okay, some things like a curb and gutter are completely fixed. There's other things where, yes, the user wants to put in, you've got a pavement layer or something, yes, you want, he wants to pass in this couple of simple things like a depth or a width. Okay, as snippets get more advanced, and as Pete's been showing you with all the fixed decisions here, snippets themselves can contain decisions. So as a user gets more advanced with what they can do with snippets, they can put decisions inside the snippets. So obviously, it's now you've got a beast that they can pass in parameters that can make decisions. Again, snippet decisions remain in the snippet itself. They don't go to the outside world of the modifier that called it. But anyway, we'll get there. And then we've got the expert level. Now, at the expert level now in V11, with that medium barrier that Peter just showed you, you can write snippets that have the intelligence to do all that themselves. They can do mathematics. They can do all sorts of things. Again, I'm sort of making clear here, there's probably four levels of snippets. And you know, the users should be able to work their way through an introduction to all of them. So snippets, they are a lot more powerful than the individual modifiers, especially in V11. There's things you can do in snippets now that you cannot do via normal modifiers. Again, we all know this. The snippets can greatly reduce the size and complexity of the MTF file. One of the ideas is the more senior guys, the guys who understand it in the company, can go and write the complex snippets. They can go look at the problems that you're dealing with, wrap it all up, and just deliver it to the end user to use. And yeah, it's the same thing. And as I said, the snippets in V11 are now almost a programming language of their own right. It depends how far you want to get into it and how much you want to learn. And yes, for now, I'll just quickly start to cover the fundamentals. So snippets are all about the text file. I imagine in future versions, we will get a better interface and more GUI. But at the moment, it is about the text file. To use a snippet, yes, you have to understand the basic MTF syntax. It's not difficult. The commands are very simple. Insert something of this name, something of this color between these changes. It's just wrapped up in a simple text file. And you do need a good text editor if you're going to be doing it. Everyone has one, Notepad++, the ones I use. They've all got syntax highlighting that can be set up. But yes, it, it is very advantageous just to have a good text file set up to suit. So the simplest sort of snippet. It is the straight contents of the MTF file. The glass is wrapped around. That's handy. The simplest snippets are the contents of the MTF file. In this case, we're inserting a string ESL. It's red, it's one meter wide, and it's at 3%, and it goes from the start at the end of the reference string. And as Pete showed yesterday, in V11 now, we can cut and paste directly in, which is very advantageous. You can create this modifier that you'd like. You use the copy snippet paste. And the magic is, as you see above there with that underscore star change, underscore end change, it pastes that syntax in for you automatically. Remember, previously in V10, you had the name position modifier start, name position modifier end, that big bulky syntax. We've removed that for you for 11. Now, the first thing to make a snippet useful is you've got to be able to pass in changes. It's not necessarily going to go from the start to the end. It's, it's going to go from here to there. The start of this string at the intersection to the other end of the intersection, something. 
So important for V11, as I said, is this new, syn this new syntax, this dollars start change, dollars end change. Now, for people remembering their V10 syntax, we use that dollars to signify it's significant for where variables substituted. But anyway, for V11, it's very straightforward there. Again, down here, we're inserting the design layer, the string ECL. It's, it's red, it goes from the one metre, minus 3% start end change. Now, the important thing is, what does that start and end change refer to? The snippet is a bunch of individual modifiers. The start change and the end change are whatever those are at the parent panel. So in this case, anything with the dollar start change in the snippet, it refers to a name part in the reference string. Anything with the dollar end change refers to, again, in that parent snippet, the relative start change. <coughs> And that's the really important thing to remember, that the start change and the end change of the snippet are just referred to whatever that change is evaluated to on the parent panel. And inside the snippet, remember, you don't have, the individual modifier doesn't have to use the start change. It can just be referenced only to the end change because it's, the snippet's for a driveway, but the little, the end tape of the driveway is purely about where the end of the driveway is. So it can be both times referencing the end change of the start panel. Similarly, it could be both referencing the end change, the start change of the past, uh, the parent panel. I hope that's sort of clear, but that's an important one to remember. Okay, for snippets to be useful, the user has to be able to pass information into them. As I said, how wide something is, what model to use. So we need this syntax that the you write the snippet and the person using it's got to be able to have a GUI to pass things in. <coughs> oh, so some water there, Pete. I'm gone. That's what you get for shouting at the puppet people from the other previous night over the noise. So in the snippets, as people would have seen for V10, we have the parameter declarations. And that's simply at somewhere in the snippet, you have this declaration parameter. We gave it a name width. Width is what we're going to substitute later on. We say it's a real value. We've got a prompt for the GUI and we've got a default parameter of three and a half metres. Similarly, I can have parameters it's another real number, it's called widening, and I've got a thing called optional where it, the user doesn't have to actually enter it, it's an optional parameter. Now again, when we, in the snippet itself, as we see here, we've got insert, edge of pavement, it's red, and we've got that dollars width, and that dollars width is the parameter that's passed. So when the user in the snippet GUI enters a number, that will be substituted in there, and away we go. So again, if the user pops up that particular snippet, you'll see there, he's got the lane width of three and a half metres and an optional widening. It's optional, so he doesn't have to do anything. That's just the basics of the parameters. I think most people who've dealt with snippets have seen this. Now, we've got a lot of parameters that you can pass up for the user. You can have choice boxes appear for the user with a list of hearsay, curve and gutters types. You've got a select parameter, which means the user will be presented with the normal string select. So part of the snippet is they'll select the string which will be used inside the snippet. We've got real, where they're just prompted for a number, one and a half, two and a half, three. You can prompt them for colors. You can prompt them for an integer parameter. You can prompt them for text. It's just a straight string. Or you can prompt down the names 4D. They'll get the names 4D box rather than a straight text. You can prompt them for a tick box, a yes, no. If we notice that newfangled flash GUI we have there now, that'll be a yes, no box, or it'll be a tick box if it's the oldest old GUI. We've also got lots of other things you can prompt. You can prompt them for a model, and similarly with the model, you can, they, you can tell them, well, the model must exist. The model mustn't exist, we're well, gonna create a model. We've got similar things for tins. If you're prompting for a tin, you've got these various options. Now, <coughs> Other things with snippets is you want details for the user to be able to see in them. So we also have this little one that added for Ed way back and uh, it's simply an info parameter. So basically you can add as much description to the info. So on the GUI for the snippet there's an info button and when the pre person presses that, anything that's been passed from the snippet file that will be displayed in that parameter. So you can give a very detailed explanation of how that snippet works. Okay. Now, we won't get too much of this today, but parameter substitution. In V10, you had that syntax there. 
with the dollar width. That meant that in the GUI where the person entered for that particular one, he entered the width of three and a half metres, that would be substituted. In V11, it's slightly different. The V10 way of the dollar's width still works, but in V10, the preferential way is to have abrasives around it. That's all, it's just mildly different. Same as you see with the start change, end change there, they've got the braces around it. Now, there's a very good reason for that. In V10, the parameters had to be, have white space around them. In V11, we can allow these things to be concatenated together, and this becomes very important later on. So as you see there, insert, EP, but then it's got the dollars, so it's all embedded into one. So depending if you've got the choice box up there for left or right, that becomes EPL or EPR. You couldn't do that in V10. We had to have white space. So this is the significant difference with 11.